welcome everybody to today's emergency briefing featuring Amots, Amots Eyal, founder and CEO of the Tuzpi Press Service, Israel's only syndicated news service. We're marching toward two weeks since Hamas Arab terrorists invaded Israel in a series of orchestrated savage and barbaric attacks. The depravity of the atrocities committed against children, the elderly, women, and men is still beyond our comprehension. The images are unimaginable, but as I said yesterday, we must watch them. We're at war and we must understand the savagery of our enemies. ZOA stands resolutely with Israel, completely supporting Israel's right, even obligation to defend herself. And we encourage Israeli leadership to use the full force of their military to pursue justice, which must include the complete eradication of Hamas. For those who weren't with us yesterday, let me mention that ZOA Director of Special Projects Liz Burney has organized the ZOA Coalition Emergency Activism Committee. If you'd like to join the next meeting, watch for an email, go to our website, www.zoa.org, or call our office for more information about the next meeting. Uh, our guest today, who will be introduced shortly, Amot Zeal, has been a valued partner of ZOA for a long time. Some of you will recognize Amot as we worked on many webinars together. We'll hear a proper introduction in just a minute, but with the misinformation spread by the mainstream media about the bombing of the hospital in Gaza, the timing of Amot's presentation is fortuitous. Amot will give about a 15-minute update from his very unique and informed vantage point after which he has agreed to answer just a few questions. If you have a question, please post it in the Q&A section of our Zoom screen. We need to be very mindful of Amots' time and apologize in advance if we don't get to your question. And we have to apologize again in advance if the audio at times seems challenged. Amots was called into service with the IDF and he's calling from Southern Israel uh, with his unit in the IDF. So please have patience and understanding. We have two other, we have an emergency briefing scheduled for Monday, October 23rd. We're gonna get an eyewitness report from Rabbi Fendel, the Rosh Yeshiva at the Chesda Yeshiva in Zderot. And on Thursday, October 26th at 1230, we'll be interviewing Frank Gaffney, founder and executive chairman of the Center for Security Policy who will speak to us about the Muslim Brotherhood, CARE, and other dangerous enemies of U.S. and Israel and the Jewish people. Here to introduce our guest is ZOA National Board Chair Ruben Morgulis. Yes, thank you. Okay. Yep. Uh, first, uh, let me say thank you to Jay. I think you, uh, you, you, you laid out the issues very, very well. Um, and... Uh, so I have to follow you, okay? But uh, I'd like to say that Amos Ayal is the founder and CEO of Taspit News Service, a veteran of several uh, ZOA webinars. The uh, news service is something that we that's very, very important, especially like Jay mentioned, with what's going on with the fake news, if I can borrow a phrase, and the, and the rush to judgment of the news here in uh, America. Israel's news agency defeats media bias by being the accurate source of news from Israel on the ground. Okay, the big three are Associated Press, Reuters, and AFP. There are nine Palestinian news agencies. The idea of a news agency is that they feed the information to the actual uh, news, news outlets. And that's what's so important about it, because it multiplies the truth. It multiplies the truth, and hopefully people get a truer version of what's going on before they start uh, spouting all kinds of misinformation. Almos is a media expert who lectures on media in the conflict zone at the IDC University in Herzliya. I think it's now Reichman University. He has a BA from Open University and an MBA from Ariel University. Almos serves, in a, in a, serves now in an elite unit in the IDF and continues to be active in reserve duty. He and his wife, Yara, live in Moshe Valon in the Jordan Desert. I call upon now uh, Amos to uh, begin his presentation and thank you for all the work you're doing. Thank you so much. Thank you, Robin. Thank you, Mort. Uh, thank you everyone who joined here, uh, joined us. Um, so my background, uh, I grew up in uh, Psagot. Psagot is a small town next to Ramallah. Um, already as a, ch a child, I uh, face a lot of uh, 
terracked uh, when terrorists shot on my house every night. Um, all we lost friend on the road, but our um, our reaction to that was always to be stronger, to make action that will help the, the Israeli society and to try to help the community and the people around. Um, when I was 12, uh, it was the first time that I um, appealed to the Supreme Court, the Israeli Supreme Court, because uh, play the soccer games was just on Shabbat. I decided that uh, it's not um, uh, make sense. It doesn't make sense that uh, my family cannot watch me playing. So we, I, I appeal to the Israel Supreme Court. We succeed to change one of the day of the games every week to be in the weekday. Uh, but I was always active. Uh, I served in elite uh, unit in one of the elite units of Israel. Uh, and when I finished my army service, I understood that uh, we have another front. We have another fight, another war to win. And this is the media war. Uh, we see, we know that Israel have a strong army but we, we see how the media the lies in the media the fake news as we all know hurting israel every day so as a young child young adult it was i was 23 said i want to change it i want to fix uh, this problem so i look carefully what happened in this arena and i saw a lot of great uh, organizations they're trying to fight the media but unfortunately all have one um, disadvantage they didn't have the information right from the ground it's mean that they always was reacting to what already was published you have one kind of organ organizations that uh, checking what's wrong in the news uh, and um, make enforcing them making them to change it to fix it it's great, it's making a lot of eff, uh, effect, but it's reaction to uh, damage is already done. Uh, the news already was out there and maybe they will fix it uh, eight hours or three days after, the people already read it. Uh, you have other organizations that are doing uh, Hasbara, uh, they're going to places and trying to explain them that what they read on the news is not what actually happened. And it's... It, maybe one of the most important things to tell people the truth but again they have this advantage because they also need to get the information from somewhere and if they're getting it from a wrong source it's hard for them to explain and it's hard it's much harder to explain to someone that read or saw a picture of a hospital i'm talking i'm already jumping ahead but of hospital that was bombed and they say Israel bombed the the, um, the hospital. How hard is to try to explain people that this is this not what happened? But if the first information, the first picture showed that the Islamic Jihad missile killed these people, it's it's making this organization work much easier. So I decide to uh, establish a news agency. Now when I start, I try to to learn what happened in the media arena, in the media side, I find out that the Palestinians have nine news agencies. They're spreading the lies every day. They're spreading it to media outlets all around the world and also to the big three news agencies that you all know, Associated Press, uh, Reuters, and AFP. The, and, and the news agency industry control 93% of world information. If you will go to your hometown news uh, paper and you read the international section it will be always almost always the news from ap associated press they don't they didn't have they doesn't have uh, um, a journalist here in israel it doesn't matter if it's the miami herald the chicago tribune or uh, i don't know boston globe maybe they have one person that getting information to his uh, office and then running these uh, articles. But again, they are not in the field. In the field, you have the news agencies. And Israel didn't have anyone there until we started. Any news agency on the ground taking pictures and videos. So I, when I was 23, I said, I'm going to change it. So how I can do it? I don't have nothing behind me. I'm like a young um, person that just finished his army and his service. So I started to build a network of volunteers. I told people we need to fight and win this war. 
you can take your old camera, take the picture, send it to me, and we will start to show the world what is happening. It was hard, really hard to start the whole this whole operation. But in 2019, I'm happy to say that we had a really a breaking point when we were invited for the first time to the World Congress of News Agencies uh, as an official news, Israel news agency. It, it's held in Bulgaria and it's uh, I, I went there and the reaction was so great. Everyone, not everyone, but tens of media outlets of news agencies said, we want to partner with you. We want to get your information. Today, we're reaching to 34 countries. Uh, we have more than 20 uh, news agencies as a partners. It means that we are reaching the, almost the whole country with our news. Uh, weekly, our readership weekly is around 250 million people. And you never heard about us. Why? Because our main goal is to be staying behind the news, not to be the website that everyone is going to read it. That's why, why, why my uh, website is password protected. It's just for the editors. But in your local newspaper, you will get my stories. You will get the Israeli perspective of stories. Now, we still have what to do with the U.S., and I will explain uh, what we have. But this is the background. Now, I don't have a lot of time, but I will take uh, a few minutes just to describe what happened on last... It's not last Shabbat. All the days is blur here. But two weeks ago on Shabbat... Rarely in the morning, 6.30, I'm getting a phone call from my uh, person that's in charge of the first information in TPS. He's the one that's sending the photographer. He say, he told me something big happening in the South. We don't have no one there. We need you. I took, uh, I decided to go there. Uh, I took my uniform and my motorcycle and drove to the to the South. I got to um, Ashkelon. And near Ashkelon, you have a junction. It's called Zikim Junction. And I said... Uh, I, and and on all the way on the way, I got a phone call and start to get details about how big the disaster in the south. Um, when I got to Zikim, I said I went. To, I wanted to go inside to the hot, but they didn't allow me to go there. The police with my motorcycle, so I left my motorcycle in Zikim, and I just started to walk inside. Uh, I I took some. Uh, I joined to another uh, armed car to get into the road. I don't want to describe what we saw there, what we hap what happened there. Um, not to details, but I can say that it was, I, I, I succeed to help a lot of wounded people, uh, unfortunately to take, uh, so to help to take uh, bodies of soldiers that was killed to fight. It was one of, it was the worst day I think in my life. Um, from last Saturday, from two weeks ago, uh, from Saturday two two weeks ago, I'm in the south. I'm serving in a in unit and uh, special unit that our job is to find our our friend, our bodies, our uh, brother and sisters on the field, the people that was murdered. Um, we're doing our best to bring uh our people, um back it's really intensive intensive here uh but i have to say the spirit of our soldiers are gr strong uh we just all most of my unit now is outside here now getting um so one volunteer came with his uh barbecue and he's making now uh, food and everyone is uh cheering us up we're getting so much uh support from um from people from the US, from the in Israel. I just a personal thing. Um my my biggest challenge was to leave my family, my wife and my two kids by themselves at home. But from the moment that I'm here, I'm getting call phone calls from my wife saying, You don't know how many people offer me to help me to make a babysitter, to uh, cook for me. I'm all okay. You can be there. You can help the country, and I I'm all okay. And for me, it's maybe the most important uh, point. 
maybe we saw we we had a terrible days and the big one maybe the biggest uh, disaster that Israel faced from the day that uh, we established the country but it's not we are not we cannot be there anymore we are strong we have the spirit and we beat then our enemies I know that um, uh, it's hard to uh, maybe to think about it but we can do it and the, and the soldier here is ready to do it now if we're talking about the media my message is we are not suffering we are not the weak people that we're suffering from the Nazis we're suffering for the Nazis but we are not the weak any uh, once anymore and we will beat them not because what they did because we will prevent them to doing it again this is the message this is the message that every article that we sign uh, we sending out need to include it yeah that we suffer but we will win and we will make sure it will not happen again uh, this is my personal experience. I will just say that I see our partners all over in Pakistan. Yeah, we have partners in Pakistan that's running our side of the stories every every day. We have partners in, in Azerbaijan, in Bulgaria, also in the US, uh, Latin America. We got from uh, Uruguay, from the, the main TV channel there, uh, pictures of support to publish their support in us. They're running our stories. We can change the narrative. We can change the story. We need to be a bit bigger, but we can do it. Now we're facing a huge challenge. Now we're fighting two front, front lines. It means that we need to be 150% uh, at work in the media. But today we have just 30% as employees because 70% of our employees was called up. And we didn't start with big number. We started with 10 people, maybe th three people now is holding the whole system to run but they're doing great and Rachel that here again no one here know how hard she's work and how 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 many how many have effort how much effort she's putting to make sure that the world see Israel as it should be this is my story. I know it's not too much. I and because I I know that you have questions and I don't have a lot of time. We need to go to uh, <laughs> another thing. Uh, I'll be happy to open it for questions. Um, and thank you all. Uh, Mort, do you have a question for Amos? Yes, I see many of the questions that are being raised <clears throat> among our listeners uh, is. <laughs> Why has Israel not gone and we were told they're going to go in many days ago? They're still standing at the border. Um, the generals have told me that the morale is 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 getting slightly less because they're not going in. What's stopping him? Is America stopping them? What's stopping him? And secondly, I'm, I'm being asked, the, the media keeps talking about the Gaza Palestinian Arabs as innocent civilians. Is it true? Should we look at the Gaza Arabs? as innocent civilians? Th those are my two questions. So uh, I cannot speak uh, openly too much because I'm in the army about uh, why we're not going inside. Um, I'm sure that few things is involved in that. Part of it is also uh, we need to know where we're going more. Uh, of course, uh, you have a foreign... Uh, um uh, initiative uh, people or uh, governments are trying to uh put pressure but I, I don't I'm not sure that this is this is that this is what uh, affect us the most um look we, we you all know that uh two weeks ago Israel was cut up um it was the biggest surprise ever uh, for Israel you don't want to have to face it again inside. You need to know where you're going more. You need to um, have the the right plans uh, for the maneuver. Um, but I cannot go again too much to details from what I know or believe or think that I know. Uh, one of the things that we really know learned that also if you think that you know everything, you know you don't know. 
So I don't want to say that I know everything, sorry. Uh, regarding the second questions about the Gaza people, if they are the civilians, look, you have their in people, they are innocent. But the, I don't think this is the questions. In, in when, when you you have a war, innocent people are hurt, is hurting. Uh, they don't, a lot of people that want to leave Gaza, they want to go uh, to Europe, they want to go to other places. They don't want to live under Hamas uh, control. Uh, I have, we have photographers in Gaza that want to live, but they cannot do cannot leave the Gaza. So that you have, but it, but we don't need to be uh, concerned about it right now. We need to make sure that's that exactly what I said before. If your um, uh, method or your your theme will be, I need to attack them because they hurt me. So who suffered more and more? But this is not my uh, way of thinking. I don't thinking about revenge. I'm thinking about preventing my family from getting slaughtered in the next time, or my friend here from getting burned alive. So if I, if you, if people, I will try to do my best not to hurt innocent people, but my family is the most important thing for me and for my country, and that's how it should be. All right, I'm going to jump in. I got to be respectful of your time. I'm going to put together a question, almost that should um, um, deal directly with your field of expertise. So, uh, foreign correspondents. How many foreign correspondents are sitting in Israel covering this report? Do they see this war? Do they see the same information that you're seeing? Why are they giving us false information? Even after Israel debunked the hospital bomb. Um, accusation. Uh, now we're even being accused that we're using AI to to manipulate the images. What's the role or what's so, the production of the correspondence, these foreign correspondents? Are they actually lying to us? So uh, permanently, uh, you have around 200 uh, foreign journalists in Israel. When uh, a war like that happening, a lot of foreign uh, um, reporters coming to the country uh, uh joining and it's not the ones that uh here all the time you asking if they're lying the the answer is yes you're asking how they lie they just not they, they, you have a lot of different and this is my full lecture about how you can fake the reality not just buying by lying but just manipulating what people see or just asking the other person a question that he will lie for you Again, this is my uh, what this is my course in the university, uh, the full the full one. Uh, but a lot of the journalists here are Palestinians that working for media outlets or Arabs that working for uh, different media media outlets. or journalists that came with certain perspective. And when you coming to a place, new place for you, and you have your own perspective, you will find. The person that will give you the perspective, you will not look for another one. This is why it's so important that Israel will be able to to um to send her, our news, and we need to be look. One of the most important thing for TPS is we succeed to build our credibility worldwide with our partners and uh, media outlets and news agencies. So they taking our words as it is, as is. And this is uh, what I think we are the only one that can change it. Because you're talking about the AI, yeah, this is will be the challenge. But if it's coming from us to our partners, they will not think about AI. Now, in the end, the person that will run your story is this, a young editor that's sitting in uh, London or you sitting in, uh, I don't know, in your in Cincinnati newsroom. He will choose. Now, if he's not trusting the source, because it's the IDF that is not trustful, trustful by um, uh, foreign media or the Israeli government, he will not use it, and he will think it's uh, he will not use it. But this is coming from a source that uh, well respected in the world news industry, 
he will use it because if it's coming fast and have a, a good headline. And that's our mission, to be first one that covering the event and to have the right headline. This is the game. This is not the game. This is the war. Okay. Uh, again, I want to be respectful of your time. Um, Amos, maybe after things quiet down, we can talk about how uh, ZOA can help get the truth of TPS reporting out. Uh, for now, is there a place that we can look at the news that as you're putting it forth in truth? Uh, I think Rachel, if Rachel can jump in, she did uh, uh, something with uh, in the WhatsApp. I don't know. Absolutely. Uh, I was just going to say, I will definitely tag in our WhatsApp group. I'll send a link right now. And then I'll also forward it for you to send out in your mailing list if need. And what I'm doing is basically we've opened up all TPS articles and I forward in pictures of our coverage as well, just so everybody is informed and has the wartime updates as they're coming in. That's great. Rachel, if you could say I, I have to say that is, I just have to say it's it's just for uh, this situation. Mostly we're not, we're not doing it. But for this situation, we decide to open it and Rachel is in charge of it. Oh, let me ask you, do you think Hezbollah will not join a second front? Do you think America is intimidating them not to? Or do you think that this is a very serious possibility? For, again, from what I hear and what I, I understand, the U.S. here is backing Israel up. Uh, this is the feeling here. This is what we're getting, um, um, again, as a journalist and as a soldier, this is the feeling that we're getting. Uh, I'm sure that you have your own, uh, each one here has his own connection in the Senate or in the Congress, and you know other, more things. But here the feeling is that for the first time, U.S. is backing Israel to attack. Um, we just feel that we need to do it in the right way. And do you think so? Do you think Hezbollah will not join the second front, or is that a no? I think thing? he will. I think he will join because again, oh, maybe I forgot to say, it's not Hezbollah and it's not Hamas. We have one per one organization, terror organization behind it. It's called Iran. And the and the Hamas and the Hezbollah is the representative of Iran and and if Iran will give Iran will give the order to Hezbollah to attack mm -hmm. they will attack. Do you think they will and give the, the order? Uh, or do you think they won't? They started already. Again, they are attacking Israel uh, today. Yeah. Uh, we have a lot of uh, missiles uh, that was uh, shot in the north. We just our photographer is Justin Kiach Munai right now taking the picture of the uh, hit that we had. Um, I I think we'll have front also in the north. Uh, again, I don't know how wide it will be in the north. Uh, I think if America, uh, if uh, U.S. will uh, join. Israel, it will be um, like maybe a smaller event, but uh, but uh, for sure it will, we will get attack from the north. We started already to get to get attack. My my all my all my family here is now in reserve. My father is in reserve. My brother uh, uh, and the other brother. My other brother is in north. I'm here in the south. My uh, my father is in Ramallah. We will have different front. But we are we are strong. Uh, we will need the support. I don't think it's going to be uh, a short uh, um, maneuver or short war. Um, we need to be prepared. And I, and like I said, I think today the spirit here is we are prepared. As a spirit, we are prepared to do it. We we are prepared to fight. We know what will happen if we will not win. Again, we saw it. We saw these Nazis attacking, like murdering kids, uh, kidnapping girls and, and like all there is. We know what will happen if we will not win. So we know that we're going to a long uh, fight in both, of the, in both fronts, in the media, but most importantly, also in the army side. Well, let me just say, uh, God bless both of you. God bless the entire IDF and the, and the Jewish people of Israel. Uh, we are doing everything we know how to do to support you. Congress is overwhelmingly supportive. Uh, and uh, we hope and pray that God will be with us. And um, 
so thank, thank you, you so for much. Time. I hope the, I hope I will have much much <laughs> more uh, time, like more relaxed time that I can, can come to the <laughs> U.S. maybe to meet you in person uh, at the great. groups. But for now, I will go back to my uh, <laughs> army job. Uh, and thank you all. Uh, thank you, Alan Mort. Margo. Bye. Amos, thank you very let much. Me, let me tell everyone to go to zoa.org. It's zoa.org. We put out material almost every day, and uh, uh, we've we've done a lot of TV, a lot of radio. Uh, I was on Mark Levin just last night, a major radio station, and uh, the Jewish people of of America are with you. The U.S. Congress is with you. You should be strong, and God should help all of us. I think we can end with that. Please help support ZOA to the best of your ability and help all the people that are helping Israel. This ends today's briefing.